So this aluminum here, we would give it a charge by removing an electron. That would make the aluminum plus. On the other hand, suppose I wanted to make aluminum minus. How many protons would that have? Yeah. And how many electrons? So the thing we see here is that aluminum always has 13 protons. That's the real reason why this is called the atomic number. This is called the atomic number because the number of protons determines which element you are. Um, if I change the number of protons, this wouldn't be aluminum anymore. Um, for example, is it what it is called isotope or? Uh, let's see. Well, um, let's talk about that in a couple minutes. That's a little bit different. Okay. So um, we have the 13 protons and 13 electrons. Now let's say that I take away So I was just saying that normally we can't remove protons. We can only remove electrons uh, unless we're doing a nuclear reaction. But let's say that I I'm, I'm, I'm actually am doing a nuclear reaction and I am taking away a proton. So I take this and I take away a proton. Now what is the name of this element? What is this element if I take one proton away? What element is that? How, what symbol should I give it? For example, this was Al, this was Al plus, and this was Al minus. So what would this be? Magnesium, Yeah. Because now you have to look up who has the atomic number of 12. And if you go to the Perry table, I guess that's magnesium. Yeah, magnesium has the atomic number of 12. And what would be the charge on the magnesium? Charge? Yeah. That is, the charge is, would it be positive 2, positive 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, if these are the uh, subatomic particles? Negative part. 1. That's right. So if I actually just took one proton away from here and I didn't change the electrons, I would go from aluminum to magnesium minus. Okay. So again, the, the main point I'm trying to make here is that the protons determine which element you're dealing with. Maybe we can get to magnesium from aluminum. Pardon? Can we get, uh, can we change aluminum and get magnesium? Is it what you mean? Yeah. Well, theoretically, you can do that. That's what we did here. If you but took, not practically. well, it would be very hard because that would be a nuclear reaction. And again, it's very difficult to actually remove things from the nucleus. So remember, of course, chemical reactions have existed for thousands of years, right? People have known how to do even just cooking is a chemical reaction. But people didn't discover nuclear reactions until around 1900, right? Until 1900, and um, and then Einstein um, with E equals M C squared. Um, and then the nuclear bomb around 1940, that those were when people first started learning about nuclear reactions. That was pretty much the first time that people learned how to, how to change the nucleus. Before that, we didn't know anything about how to change the nucleus, just how to change the electrons on the outside. Okay, so theoretically, if you, had, say, have a good enough um, apparatus or enough energy, you could theoretically reach in and take out one proton and turn this from aluminum into magnesium minus, but that would be much harder than these normal chemical reactions. Okay. So I just wanted to use this as a thought experiment. Again, the main point I wanted to make is it's the protons that tell you which element you're dealing with. If you change the number of protons, you change the element. Um, and so most of the time, we can't change the element. Normally, so in chemical reactions, you don't change what elements are around because you're not changing how many protons each of them has. Okay. Uh, and then the, uh, the electrons relative to the protons determine the charge. Okay. Well. So uh, let's see. So let's go back to hydrogen. Uh, how many protons does hydrogen have again? One. Good. Um, and uh, if it was a uh, neutral hydrogen, it would have one electron. What is the mass of a proton? Well, you could look up the mass of a proton in a book. And I think that you would get that the mass of the proton is uh, something like uh, 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Something like 10 to the 20, negative 27 kilograms. Well, that's a, such a small number that it's not very convenient to work with. So instead, we usually use different units for protons. We use what are called AMUs, or atomic mass units. And then we would just define that the proton has a mass of approximately one atomic mass unit, which is much more convenient to work with. It's probably not exactly one AMU, but it's very close, close to one AMU. Now, how about the electron? Do you remember, is the electron about the same mass as a proton, or more or less? It's embarrassing, but I 
That no, don't worry. That's right. Um, a little less or a lot less. That's right. It turns out that the, in fact, the mass of an electron is almost negligible compared to the mass of the proton. Electrons have way less mass than the protons. I think they have like one eighteen hundredth as much mass, approximately, as the proton. So actually, a lot of the time, we will approximate the mass of the electron as zero AMUs. It's not really zero, but it's so much smaller than the proton that usually we can just ignore it. So oftentimes we ignore the mass of the electron. So again, the real mass of a proton is something like 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And the mass, that, that's the mass of a proton. And the mass of an electron is approximately, I think, 10 to the negative 30 kilograms. Well, that, these differ by um, a factor of 10 to the third, or a thousand. Uh, at least a thousand. So that's only approximate, but that shows that the electron is much less massive than the proton. But again, it's not, usually not convenient to work with kilograms. It's more convenient to work with AMUs, atomic mass units. Now, normal hydrogen has no neutrons. Normally, hydrogen has no neutrons. All right, but then there's another version Let's think about, suppose we had one proton, one electron, and one neutron. So this is a different element, or a different situation than this one. Now first of all, what would be the name of this element? If it has one proton, one electron, and one neutron, what, what, which element in the periodic table would it be? Which element in the periodic table would it be with one proton? That's good, that's right. Because remember, the, the protons are the atomic number. The protons tell you which element you have. Anything with 13 protons must be aluminum. Anything with 12 protons must be magnesium. Uh, so anything with one proton must be hydrogen. So this is just a different version of hydrogen, because this version has a different number of neutrons. So this is a different version of hydrogen. Um, what's the mass of a neutron? Well, it turns out that neutrons have almost the same mass as a proton. They're not literally the same, but it's almost the same. So we usually approximate both of these as having a mass of one. We would usually approximate them both as having the same mass of one atomic mass unit. So what would be the total mass, uh, well, what would be the, the, um, the approximate mass of, in AMUs of this hydrogen? Would be the of this hydrogen here, with one proton, one electron, and zero neutrons, how many AMUs would its mass be in total? I remember the formula was V is equal A times... Oh, let's see. Actually, I think I was going through something simpler there. So we were looking, I was asking, what's going to be the total mass of this hydrogen? Well, it has one proton, which has a mass of one. And it has an electron, which has almost no mass. And it has no neutrons. So its total mass would be one plus zero plus zero or one. So the total mass of this hydrogen would be approximately one atomic mass unit. So then what would be the mass in atomic mass units of this hydrogen with one proton, one electron, and one neutron? Yeah, that's right. So in this case, it would be one atomic mass unit plus the electron is approximately zero atomic mass units, and the neutron is approximately one atomic mass unit. So together, that would give us two atomic mass units. And usually, this is now what's called the mass number. Uh, remember that the atomic number is, tells you the number of protons. The atomic number tells you the number of protons. The mass number tells you the total mass in AMU. So this has a mass number of one, and this has a mass number of two. Well, we need, that's good, because now we can have two different symbols for these two different types of hydrogen. So this is the type of hydrogen with no neutrons. It has a mass number of one. And this is the type of hydrogen with, two neutron, uh, with uh, one neutron. So it has a mass number of two. So we could call this hydrogen one. We could call this hydrogen two. That's how we can distinguish uh, between these. And there's actually also something that has one proton, one electron, 
and two neutrons. There's also something that has two neutrons and one proton. What would be the name of this element? What, which element in the periodic table is this? Hydrogen. Still hydrogen, because it still has one proton. The protons are the atomic number. So I still write down H. But what would be the mass number for this hydrogen? Three. Yeah, one plus two is three. So this would be distinguished from the other ones by calling it hydrogen three. All right, so what do we call elements that have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons? Those are what are called isotopes. So I wanted to mention this because you had brought up isotopes a few minutes ago. So isotopes don't really have anything to do with the electrons. Isotopes have nothing to do with the electrons. Two things are isotopes if they have the same number of protons and different numbers of neutrons. Um, or they're isotopes if they're the same element but they have different numbers of neutrons.